When soldiers in Vietnam found an old toilet, they transformed it into an insane weapon of war. But before we start, please make sure to subscribe to Did You Know and hit the bell so you never miss an upload from us. Also, leave a like right now. In the skies above Vietnam in October 1965, something rather unusual is happening. A strange object plummets to Earth. But this isn't a UFO or a meteor hurling to the ground. Rather, this flying object is all too familiar. Made of smooth white porcelain and slightly oval in shape, it is, in fact, a toilet. Yeah, you heard that right, a toilet. And the reason it's there is more sinister than you might think. So, where'd the toilet come from? Originally, it was formed part, presumably, of the bathroom facilities on an American aircraft carrier. Found damaged and ready for the trash pile on board the USS Midway, the discarded porcelain was snapped up for a peculiar scheme, and it was a plan that involved several departments on the ship. The Midway itself was sailing the South China Sea, deployed on operations during the Vietnam War, and it was during this mission that the toilet ended up strapped to an A-1 Sky Raider plane. The craft, flown by Commander Clarence Stoddard, was key to the success of the scheme, and to make sure their plan was recorded, they used a second Sky Raider, with a little something extra attached. In fact, to ensure the success of the plot was chronicled for posterity, Stoddard's wingman and fellow pilot, Lieutenant Commander Robin Bacon, flew the mission in a Sky Raider with an old World War II camera attached. As a result, the pair were able to show the Midway's crew the fruits of their labor. But to understand the plan, we need to take a look at why America was involved in the Vietnam War in the first place. The history of the conflict in Vietnam is both complex and deep-rooted. While America's involvement can be traced back to the end of World War II, the origins of this war actually took hold during the 1800s. At that time, the country became a French colony under Gallic rule, and this was a situation that stood for nearly a century. During World War II, however, Japan invaded Vietnam. Then they occupied the country until their surrender at the end of the conflict. After the Japanese withdrawal, the French once again took power. This situation, however, left many Vietnamese wanting an independent homeland, all of which led to the beginning of the fight for a free Vietnam. Originally created to defend the country from the Japanese, the Viet Minh instead began to fight for independence after the war ended. Led by Ho Chi Minh, the forces took their inspiration from Soviet and Chinese communism, and as a result of this post-war uprising, things in the country began to change. The Viet Minh soon took control of Hanoi, the country's capital, having deposed the French colonial ruler, Bao Dai. They then declared Minh the president of the Democratic Republic of Vietnam. But Dai didn't just give up. With France's backing, he set up the separate state of Vietnam in the south of the country. And in July 1949, Saigon became its capital. Despite the conflict, however, it seems that both Minh and Dai actually had the same aim a unified Vietnam. The difference, though, was that one side wanted a communist regime, while the other preferred closer links with Western cultures. And the resulting ideological and civil war ultimately led to America's involvement in a conflict thousands of miles away. Before the U.S. put boots on the ground in Vietnam, though, the French experienced an enormous defeat. The Battle of Dien Binh Phu in 1954 for the Viet Minh. Indeed, it marked the end of colonial rule in the country after nearly a hundred years, and this triumph resulted in the country effectively being split in two. The communists controlled the northern half, while those loyal to Dai held the south. After the French ruler was toppled in 1955, a nationalist, extremely anti-communist government took power in South Vietnam. That same year, American President Dwight D. Eisenhower threw U.S. support behind the new regime. Why? Despite having been allies during World War II, political tensions between America and the Soviet Union had risen following the end of the conflict. As a result, America became increasingly hostile to nations sympathetic towards the Soviets, and that list of countries now included North Vietnam. American support of South Vietnam at the time included providing military equipment and training by U.S. armed forces. No American soldiers, however, were involved directly in the growing conflict. Within a few years, of course, all that would change. Over the next few years, American troop numbers in Vietnam would increase exponentially. Just 500 military personnel were stationed there during the 50s. By 1962, that total had grown to about 9,000. And although then-President John F. Kennedy approved that swell in numbers, they were there for support, not military intervention. In 1964, however, an incident occurred that meant that America could no longer stand on the sidelines of the war. Following the successful North Vietnamese targeting of a pair of U.S. naval craft, the Americans officially began a military campaign against the Viet Minh. 
In the early days of the conflict, though, that mostly involved heavy bombing raids. In 1965, however, those air raids were backed up by boots on the ground. In July of that year, some 82,000 military personnel were deployed to Vietnam to help the South win the war. This marked the beginning of one of America's bloodiest conflicts. The Viet Cong, as they'd become known, refused to give up and just kept fighting. The Viet Cong was able to do that thanks in part to support from its Soviet allies. Helping to bolster the North's air defenses, the resulting escalation led to the U.S. military leaders calling for a further 175,000 troops to fully aid the South Vietnamese. That number would ultimately increase far beyond even that figure. In fact, in 1967, about half a million U.S. troops were stationed in South Vietnam. But despite what would seem to be an overwhelming numbers, along with superior firepower, America was losing soldiers at an alarming rate. During one particular battle that year alone, more than 1,800 U.S. casualties were recorded. By the end of 1967, after roughly two years of fighting, U.S. casualty numbers had reached enormous levels. The death toll had climbed to over 15,000, while the injured numbered more than 100,000 Americans. Despite the growing evidence to the contrary, however, the U.S. government insisted that they were winning the war. Things did not improve for America as the war dragged on. In addition to heavy fighting, in 1968, a significant number of U.S. troops, along with southern Vietnamese fighters, were held in a siege. Trapped for a total of 77 days by the Viet Cong, the troops of the Khe Shan garrison managed to hold their ground, despite North Vietnamese efforts. But while Khe Shan ended in a victory for the U.S., elsewhere other troops weren't quite so successful. Just days after the siege began, North Vietnamese forces launched a series of coordinated operations in the South. Attacking over 100 targets, including the U.S. Embassy in Saigon, what was dubbed the Tet Offensive took U.S. forces completely by surprise. As a result of this show of power, American military leaders requested another 200,000 troops to be deployed. That same year, intense fighting saw America lose its biggest number of soldiers in one week. A total of 543 military personnel died in Vietnam during the seven days between February 11th and 17th, 1968. With the death toll so high, more and more men were needed to fill those combat roles. As a result, then-President Richard Nixon made a critical decision. In 1969, Nixon introduced a military drafting policy, conscripting men into the armed forces. The first draft since World War II meant that any man born between 1944 and 1956 could be forced into service at any time. And as you might imagine, this policy was incredibly unpopular, particularly among the young boys it targeted. The draft, alongside television coverage of the war, eventually turned public opinion. Having once been in favor of intervention in Vietnam, the American people now showed their anger against the situation. A series of public protests against conscription and the war in general took place across the country, the largest of which took place in Washington, D.C. There, more than a quarter of a million people gathered in the capital to demand America pull out of the conflict. Protests against the draft, however, also took a slightly less public forum. About 40,000 American men, rather than risk war or prison, simply ran. Many moved to Canada, where there was no draft. Others, however, weren't quite so lucky. Indeed, conscription reportedly brought up to 35,000 men a month into the military. And it wasn't just prospective soldiers that were unhappy with the situation. Troops on the ground in Vietnam were also frustrated with the long-running conflict. In fact, over the course of the war, roughly a half million U.S. troops simply deserted. And who can blame them? Many of those who stayed suffered long-lasting psychological trauma and mutinies were not uncommon. Perhaps in response to public pressure, Nixon finally ended the draft in 1973. Over the course of its existence, more than two million men were conscripted, although not all of them went to Vietnam. And America officially ended its involvement that same year after signing a peace treaty with North Vietnam. That peace treaty finally put an end to a decade of bloody conflict. At its close, America had lost over 58,000 military personnel to the war. The death toll in Vietnam, however, was far greater. In total, more than 2 million Vietnamese were killed, over half of whom were civilians, and a further 3 million were injured during the fight. The signing of the peace treaty closed the book on one of the darkest chapters in American history. An ideological war that neither side had really won had cost millions of lives. But it wasn't just close combat that led to so many deaths. America, in fact, continued its aerial bombardment of Vietnam throughout the conflict. But while most of the munitions dropped on Vietnam were shall we say conventional, one particular bomb definitely was not. Remember that toilet plummeting to the earth that we mentioned earlier? Well, it wasn't just any old broken toilet. It was, in fact, a specially made bomb. And how does a broken loo filled with explosives end up being dropped on Vietnam? To answer that, we have to go back to the midway. The toilet was, as we mentioned, broken beyond repair and destined for the trash heap. 
or more likely waiting to be thrown overboard before that could happen however one of the pilots on board rescued it and a plan was born from there the munition team retrofitted tail fins a rack for the payload and a nose fuse to the broken loo it was now a live bomb now that the makeshift bomb nicknamed rather aptly Santa flush was complete it had to be fitted to a plane step forward commander Stoddard whose Sky Raider was scheduled for a mission and to keep the unorthodox ordinance a secret the Midway crew reportedly obscured the vision of commanding officers as it was attached at which point the pilot and his wingman ready themselves for takeoff in fact so successful were the crew's machinations that no one in command saw the toilet bomb before Stoddard took off at which point recalled Clint Johnson a pilot who was present that day officers asked what the hell was on Stoddard's right wing the plan had worked and Sandy flush was on its way to Vietnam Stoddard and his wingman Bacon were on their way to drop ordnance over the country's Mekong Delta and the toilet bomb would form part of that mission however rather than just being a joke the unusual incendiary actually had a more somber significance as well in addition to being perhaps the only bomb ever made from a broken toilet it also had the distinction of marking six million pounds of explosives dropped by US forces on Vietnam and in order to record the moment for fellow crew members Bacon actually filmed the toilet bombs journey to earth using a camera attached to the wing of his Sky Raider the resulting footage reportedly showed the unorthodox ordnance almost hitting his plane in addition the toilet apparently whistled as it fell to the ground following the drop as Johnson told website Midway sailor there were a lot of jokes with air intelligence about germ warfare and it seemed that the resulting clip was a big hit with crews but while the Midway crew felt the plan had gone well it seems that the toilet bomb didn't perform quite the way it should have indeed according to the website military history online the unorthodox ordinance was discovered intact by the North Vietnamese while the toilet bomb may not have exploded many many others definitely did in total America dropped three times more bombs in Vietnam than they used in the entirety of World War II from precision guided ordnance to cluster bombs and beyond the US military came well equipped and that included using the daisy cutter one of the most powerful modern conventional weapons ever deployed in addition to explosive ordnance the US military also used napalm a gel based petroleum product it's incredibly sticky and burns at very high temperatures essentially used to set fire to large swaths of land its deployment during the war caused horrendous injuries to anyone unlucky enough to come into contact with it and even if you were just in the area you weren't safe the amount of carbon monoxide produced when napalm burns suffocates everything in close proximity but perhaps the worst weapon that America used during the conflict wasn't even a weapon at all it was in fact a herbicide a chemical designed to kill plants in an effort to destroy Vietnam's dense vegetation US forces sprayed millions of gallons of ancient orange considered one of the most toxic substances on the planet the devastation it brought was enormous so widespread and long-lasting were the effects its use on the country has since been described as ecocide it wasn't just the Vietnamese vegetation though that suffered in fact humans on both sides appear to have borne the effects of contact with agent orange these alleged effects included cancer birth defects miscarriages and skin rashes and lesions whatever its causes and whatever was dropped the Vietnam War has definitely left an indelible impression on the planet